Hello and welcome everybody to this quick tip tutorial on how to create transparent shadows. Uh, first of all I'm going to show you an example of where I use transparent shadows. Um, this is some kind of a fuel cell uh, testing device and you have the transparent shadow in here really smooth. You can change the background to whatever you like which is even more important if you print the image. Uh, let's say if, uh, this is for example this is an image I did for another company and if you print this image onto a newspaper page which is let's say a little bit yellowish um, you would clearly see the seams um, if this background was white, if this was not transparent. So the background being transparent it's easy to print it everywhere you want. It's easy to change the background basically. This is the main advantage of it. So I'm just gonna jump into Blender and show you how this has been done. Uh, first of all I'm just gonna activate the screen keys so you can see what I'm pressing in here. Um, I'm gonna grab the cube, put it up for one unit, then I'm gonna add a plane so that we have something that the shadows are gonna be projected onto and I'm going to change this lamp into a sun. Also switch to cycles renderer because it really gives you nicer results than the internal renderer and I'm going to rotate the sun so that we can see the shadow. So now you got a nice smooth shadow in here everything's fine. Um, I'm also going to check the multiple importance samples so that the noise is being reduced and what is really important is that you have to check the transparent button in here. I can show you this while rendering. Um, you see the background is gray right at the moment. This is because the world is gray. Uh, so if you check this transparent button, it's going to become alpha. The next thing is that you should activate ambient occlusion just to um, brighten up the screen a little bit. Let's say 0.35 is, is okay not too bright because otherwise you won't see sharp shadows or you won't see the shadow at all basically <laughs> and um, if you gonna save the image later on you have to check RGBA so it's gonna be an alpha channel in inside of the PNG image so this said and done um, I'm going to go to the render layers and I'm just going to call this one the main layer. The other one is going to be the shadow layer. If you now select the plane and by pressing M move it to the second layer so that you have the cube on the first and the plane on the second layer you can choose both of them down here. Uh, you might have recognized choosing any layer in here is pretty much the same as choosing it in here so these ones, these menus are equal to each other and these ones define what is having influence on the layer here. So if I choose the second layer down here, means I just choose the layer with the plane on it, both of these objects will have influence on the plane on the second layer. So if I just give this a render, you will see what I mean. And now we just get the plane with the shadow on it, but no cube. So I'm gonna do the same for the main layer, but instead of just having the plane, I'm just gonna render the cube. Then, by pressing Ctrl left arrow, I'm gonna switch to the compositing and check you use notes. Then I'm gonna bring this menu up to full screen by pressing Ctrl arrow up and I'm also gonna by pressing control shift and clicking on the render layer I'm just gonna delete this again because this might be too quick um, control shift and then click on the render layer it's adding in a viewer node you can see what's in the viewer node if you check backdrop down here so now you see the image that's actually coming out of the image node here so uh, the thing is that the background is black right now and you can change this by pressing this button because now the alpha is also becoming visible. The next thing we're going to do is duplicate this layer and then we're going to choose 
the shadow layer. So what we have to do is make the background, which is alpha right now, make it the same color as the plane. For this we're going to use the alpha over node and we're going to put the image in here. So now we see that the, the background is white, this white. And if you just take this uh, sample, a sample of this plane, you see that the color, there's no edge anymore. Maybe just a slight edge there. Let me just choose something next to the corner. Okay, so now there's no, there should be no edges anymore. Anyway, um, now we're gonna have to make this color alpha. For this, I'm gonna use a color ramp. If you have a look at the color ramp, it means that these values are the, the bright values and these values are the dark values and it's basically mapping them to whatever color you choose in here. So uh, if I click on this and you can, you can grab it, yes, uh, you can switch it here, the handle, and if you choose any color, black or green or whatever, um, you see that the color is going to be this color. So if I choose alpha down here, and make this black. I will have the light part of the image becoming alpha and the in-betweens are becoming more and more transparent and so you get a nice grayish shadow I would say. So the next thing is that you have to mix this shadow with the alpha of the original image. And I just see uh, this is the image that was inside uh, the the compositor node once I rendered and I didn't make the changes yet the ones with this layer here so we have to render it again so there's just a cube now. So switching back so you see the changes have been made and I'm gonna put this image down here so if we check this by using the viewer node. Now you can see it right now, there's the cube and there's just the shadow of it. So this is the first method and a second one would be if I just delete all these nodes again the second one would be just click on the plane or just choose the shadow render layer down here and check shadow pass, so the shadow pass is being rendered as well. If you now render this again and go back to the compositor, you will see the, the shadow output down here. This looks like this one. And if you take a mix node and if you choose the difference between this image, the alpha image, and the image of the shadow, you will just get this piece, like the shadow we need. And I'm just going to show you this the difference image and the alpha image. So now we have a mask just for our shadow. The next thing we have to do is set alpha. and we need to set the alpha to everything that's black right now. So if you have a look at the image now, we got a pure black shadow. Usually I also, if I don't want to use that high samples, because it takes takes a while to get a clear image, you could also use a filter blur node to have a smooth shadow and it um, you don't have that big render times then, or long render times. So this is the smooth shadow. And then, as <coughs> same as in the example before, we're just going to mix this using the alpha over node again. Here. With the original image. And so we got our result. As you see, I'm just going to bring this window up. Um, as you see, the the shadow is pure black and not gray because we didn't use the color ramp, we just use the
the shadow output, but this one's pretty good if you just use a lower amount of samples. So let's say you just for this for the shadow layer, excuse me, for the shadow layer, you just use 20 samples, let's say, and for the main layer, it takes the, it takes the same number as you choose in down sampling down here. So if I choose 80 right here, it takes 80 for the main layer, and here it takes 20 for the shadow layer. Now, I'm just going to give this a final render using the GPU because this is much faster. And this is our final result. Get a key. So I hope I could help you. Feel free to ask if there are any questions left. Bye.